It's all well and good putting the latest and greatest to the test, but I thought it might be interesting to uh, go back to a time when options were limited and expectations were low. So if that sounds up your street, sit tight to see me do just that in this video sponsored by Surfshark. So after trawling through eBay for suitably outdated car cleaning tools and products to feature then, this is what the postie dropped on my doorstep a week or so later. Now I'd tried to be as diverse with my purchases as possible, so had a couple of car wash kits that came complete with their own cheap sponges and crusty cloths, a rusty unopened tin of polish which promised to protect and preserve, an awkward looking 12 volt rotary car polisher with both foam and wool polishing heads, an even more awkward looking brittle plastic handheld vac that clips directly to your battery, a magnetic window cleaning appliance that weighed about as much as my pressure washer, and a quirky looking car shampoo that unfortunately turned out to be a kid's bubble bath. Now, while a vintage car would have been perfect to pair these products with, finding a suitably dirty one that the owner was happy to have me use as a guinea pig was easier said than done, so settled on this 17-year-old Volvo V70 instead, which while obviously not being vintage, was still grandad enough to partake in an old school shed fest, plus would hopefully be robust enough to withstand being abused with manky old products that were well and truly past their best. And to fill the gaps of outdated stuff I didn't have, and to also compare and contrast a bit, had a handful of more reliable modern products to fall back on too. Now talking of reliable modern products, before I get stuck into the outdated stuff, need to give a shout out to Surfshark, who had such a good reaction from you last time I gave their VPN a mention, wanted to make another video of mine possible. So if you're a bit vintage yourself and don't understand the benefits of a virtual private network, allow me to explain. So normally the information sent between your devices and the internet is unencrypted and therefore potentially accessible by crafty cyber criminals. But a VPN helps to throw them off the scent by securely masking your location with a new one, usually in a completely different country. While changing your location at the flick of a switch provides great peace of mind, another huge benefit of using a VPN is that it can be utilised to safely unblock region restricting content. So if you're bored of your current Netflix library for example, simply change your location to suit the country whose material you want to view, then log in to enjoy fresh, previously unseen entertainment at no extra cost from the streaming service. Surfshark doesn't keep tabs on your online activities, so you're free to anonymously watch as many cringy YouTubers as you like. And to help you do just that, I've included a unique link in the description below that grants a whopping 83% off the cost of membership, plus three months extra free with the code CLEANING. So if you don't want to be caught digitally short, check it out risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. So the Volvo was far too dirty to just go straight to a vintage sponge bath, so got to work treating the inner arches and genuine BBS nebula wheels to a more modern pre-wash with Auto Finesse's dynamite traffic film remover and my Kranzel car scope pressure washing combo to cut back the bulk of the brake dust and dirt. The dynamite TFR was then reapplied to the wheels before being worked into and over them with some brushes and a squeaky vintage sponge taken from one of the kits, as they were in need of a full refurb so it didn't really necessitate gentle tools or a dedicated wheel cleaner.
Once the wheels were out the way, the same traffic film remover was then generously sprayed over the lower half of the body as that was just as dirty, if not dirtier. As soon as it had been applied and before it had a chance to start drying in the sun, a blanket of Autobrite Direct Palmer Violet Snow Foam was laid over the top to allow it to safely soak for a few minutes longer, but mainly to kill two detailing birds with one stone, which to be fair it seemed to do quite well judging by the dirt that was subsequently pulled off and deposited on the ground below. The car was then thoroughly rinsed off from top to bottom with my ageing Kranzel and a forceful 25 degree car scope nozzle to thoroughly drive away as much of the dirt the pre-wash combo had softened up during its soak as possible as it was onto an unforgiving vintage sponge bath next so understandably wanted as little abrasive dirt left on the surface as possible. While the pre-wash products had been soaking, I'd filled and frothed the bucket with the old wash wax product from the Yesterday's Dreams hot rod cleaning kit, which sudsed up surprisingly well. And while I didn't bother with two buckets here, did drop a grit guard into the one to help dislodge any loose dirt from the surface of the sponge, which was used to thoroughly wash the V70's titanium grey paintwork over to remove what remaining dirt there was sitting on the surface, which thankfully wasn't much as the pre-washing had done exactly what it was supposed to. Surprisingly, the decades old shampoo wasn't half bad, and if I didn't know its age, would have assumed it was just a relatively cheap modern product as it certainly seemed to do the job. Now, not wanting to push my swirly look on someone else's pride and joy too much, didn't wash the entire car over with the sponge and switched to a plush modern item to more effectively access the nooks and crannies and safely finish it off before it was rinsed down with the pressure washer once again to remove the senile suds which, despite their age, didn't seem to leave any kind of streaky or stubborn residue behind whatsoever. It was then straight on to drying before the sun did the job for me, and because I've been unkind to the V70's surface with the sponge, I thought it was only fair I used a nice plush modern microfiber towel to dry it, plus none of the stuff I'd bagged off eBay included an old chamois, so put this impressive pink ultimate twist loop towel from Autobright Direct to good use, which, even on a car of this size, effortlessly soaked up the rinse water, whether being lightly drawn across a surface or worked over it by hand, and there were no dry aids necessary here which was fine with me as I highly doubt they existed back in the day anyway. So now that the car had been thoroughly washed and dried, it was then time to try and enhance the metallic grey paintwork a bit with the contents of this pre-metric metal tin. Now, although I did have the rotary polisher to hand, had no idea how heavy this product might potentially be, so thought it was probably better to apply it by hand using a newish foam applicator instead. It was worked over the surface in the same manner any other polish would be before its residue was buffed straight off, first with a plush microfiber again from Autobright. Although the residue was a little sticky, it came off without too much of a fight and left the surface feeling pretty slick, which, considering it hadn't seen the light of day for decades, was quite impressive. That being said, it was still really messy to work with and stunk of petrol, so after testing it out on two or three panels to get a feel for it, decided to prematurely retire it as it was just too unpleasant to realistically stick with.
So, although my time with Timothy was brief, I still had the Car Polisher model number 2710 to get to grips with, so plugged it into the V70's Siggy Lighter, primed its decades old foam pad with a capable modern compound courtesy of Turtle Wax, and fired it up for a single stage polish. Now, despite how naff it might look, it actually worked quite well. Granted, it was pretty slow and it didn't have much torque, which meant once light pressure was applied, even with the thick, soft foam pad, it slowed considerably, so it wasn't realistically going to be able to remove any defects. But it was super easy to use, and I can imagine back in the day when options were limited, would have been a massive luxury that definitely served to get the neighbour's vintage curtains twitching. Now, even though it wouldn't have been very strenuous to do so, didn't realistically have the time to retro machine the whole car over here, so just chose to work a few select panels over with it. But the ones I did manage to polish still came up well enough to attract the local ghetto bird, which obviously wanted to check the vintage shine from above. So with the exterior looking a lot more presentable thanks to its mix of retro and modern tools and products, it was time to move on to the interior to test out the stained mattress coloured handheld cadet vac, which had to be connected directly to the battery via its crocodile clips for extra danger. So did just that before firing it up for the first time in God knows how long. The V70's boot liner was given a going over with the stiff brush attachment first, which seemed to get rid of the loose bits and dust okay, but it was way too rough to reasonably be put to use on any other interior surface. So tried the tiny crevice tool on the dirty driver's floor mat instead, and while it did just about pick up the loose bits, took its sweet time doing so, so couldn't imagine attempting to vac an entire car out with it, but at least it worked for the video and didn't blow up or fall apart in my hands. So last and by very means least then was the Goldings Magnetic Window Cleaner which I don't think was actually intended for use on cars but thought it was still worth carefully giving a go. Now I didn't have any vintage glass cleaner to hand so Turtle Wax's new mist stuff was generously applied by the innovative Flarosol sprayer first before the heavy magnetic contraption was vertically worked over a couple of the side windows which to be honest didn't really seem to do much other than smear them up and potentially damage the surrounding components with its hefty weight. Perhaps I could have sprayed the incorporated sponge instead of liberally spraying the glass itself but doubt that would have made much difference in the grand scale scheme of things, so binned it before it binned the car and finished off with a trusty glass cleaning cloth instead. With the dodgy window cleaning out the way, the freshly cleaned tyres were then dressed with a modern duo of suitable products from Carscope, as I couldn't find anything old to put to the test on them, but either way it made sense to quickly smarten them up before grabbing some after shots, so did just that, making sure to buff them back afterwards so as not to detract from the immense electric polisher induced shine of the surrounding paintwork. Lastly then, it was simply a case of a complimentary screen wash top up which advised one measure per washer bottle, whatever that meant, so just glugged a bit in from the faded yellow bottle before topping it up with filtered tap water as it smelled incredibly strong and didn't want it dissolving the surrounding paintwork when later dispensed. So I reckon overall I could just about classify the day as a success. Yes, without the help of the more modern stuff to fill the gaps, I might have come unstuck, but that's exactly why I had them to hand to start with. So in terms of the vintage products, aside from smelling a bit out of date, the wash and wax that came in the hot rod kit actually did a great job, and in a blind test with something more modern, probably wouldn't be able to tell any better.
Old sponges are just that, so not much to say about them apart from that's all there really was to wash your car with back in the day. Timmy's metal tint of imperial polish did brighten up the surface, but was unfortunately too far gone for sustained use. But the iffy looking Siggy Lighter Power polisher was a pleasant surprise. Quiet, easy to control, and while it didn't have much torque, still managed to utilise a modern compound to substantially freshen up the surface. The old dusting cloths weren't much to shout about, and as to be expected, were overshadowed by the more modern microfiber towels. The crocodile clip Corvac wasn't really up to the job, but again was worth a punt and fair play to it for still firing up after all these years. I'd call the magnetic glass cleaning contraption an abject failure, but then if it wasn't intended for use on car windows, maybe it'd shine elsewhere. It remains to be seen if the screen wash was effective, but it certainly smelt like it had enough alcohol to cut through the thickest of bugs, and the quirky little bottle was definitely worth keeping for the future garage shelf, as was the vintage bubble bath, which I could always fill with something more suitable. So while yesterday's dreams can easily be today's nightmares, I think for the V70 here it could have been a lot worse. And if you didn't know it had been tended to, at least in part with manky old tools and products, you'd be none the wiser. So if you recognise any of the vintage nonsense featured here, do drop a comment below. And if not, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out that Surfshark offer via the link below. And I'll see you with something slightly more up to date next time.